It is tempting to believe that a good subject will always make for a great photograph, that all we need is a beautiful tree, a grand vista, or a stunning mountain peak. In this video, I want to argue that that isn't enough, that we need to pay close attention to every inch, every pixel of our images. Otherwise, we might end up with an image that doesn't do justice to that beautiful subject we found. For example, in most of my recent images from Madeira, you will find that there is one clear subject, one tree that stands out the most in the frame. But you'll also find one or more trees in the background, as I was playing with them, trying to find relationships between those and the subject that didn't necessarily exist in the real world. I also chose to show the foreground in some of them to give some context to all of this. All of those elements are there for a reason. All of them complement the subject to tell a more compelling story. The subject, the tree, is the main character, but everything else is the supporting cast and they all have a role to play. But more importantly than the elements I chose to show, it's the ones that I decided to leave out. The things that were distracting, taking away from what I was trying to say with those images. When I compose an image, of course, I keep an eye on the subject, but I also keep another one, if not 10, on the rest of the frame, making sure that only the things I want make it into the frame and nothing else is sneaking in. I pay very close attention to what's going on in the foreground, what's in the background, and I make sure that there are no distractions on the edges of the frame. We can try to avoid some of those distractions by moving closer or farther away, by trying different focal lengths, or maybe shooting at a different time of the day under different conditions, maybe using a shallower depth of field or a bigger depth of field, or maybe even using techniques like long exposures. And when none of this works, when we can't remove the distractions from the frame without compromising the composition and the image itself, then we can try to fix it in post. Yes, I give you permission to use the healing brush to remove stuff and to dodge and burn your image to minimize those distractions as much as you can. Check every pixel, nothing is too small. Look at this image. This was my favorite from Madeira. I loved everything about it. The composition, the conditions were perfect, but there was this tiny bright dot in the middle of the tree. It was bothering me so much, it was driving me crazy because I couldn't unsee it. Of course, I took care of it and the image got much better. No distractions, just a clear and beautiful subject and a foreground and a background to complement it to tell a compelling story. Now, many times, most of the times, there is nothing we can do about the environment. There are going to be distractions. You need to decide whether they are too much for the image or not. And in most cases, they will be. If the image doesn't work, it doesn't work. Don't force it. You see, when a photographer comes back home empty-handed from a photography trip and with nothing to show, most likely it's not because they weren't able to find a compelling subject or a beautiful subject. It's probably because that subject was in the wrong place or the conditions just didn't fit the story or it was the wrong time of the day to be shooting that subject. Being able to recognize when an image doesn't work is a very, very important skill to have for a photographer. And by the way, I don't want to discourage you from pressing that shutter. On the contrary, I always take the photo anyway, even when I don't think it's going to work because I might not be thinking properly in the field. And also because I learn a lot from those shots. Once I let those images marinate for a while and I'm relax at home and I have time to sit down and look at them properly, it is then when I can see them for what they are, and it is then when it's time for me to be ruthless. But before I get rid of the image, I always ask myself, why? Why didn't it work? Was it the uh, conditions? Would have it worked if I shot it at a different time of the day or in six months? Perhaps the subject was just in the wrong place, the scene was just too busy and the viewer would have a very hard time trying to figure out what it is that I was trying to show to say with that image. In any case, we should not overthink our images. Practice makes you better, and once we learn to pay attention to everything in the frame, not just the subject, 
it just becomes second nature to you. So next time you are out taking photos, pay close attention to what's in the foreground, what's around the subject and what's behind it. Ask yourself if they help the image or they are taking away from it. And if that's the case, how you can get rid of those distractions. This is it. I hope this video was helpful and useful. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.